What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Move Rewind and today I'll be reviewing Casualty Series 28. So without further ado, let's get into it. The 28th series of casualties started on the 3rd of August 2013 and concluded after 48 episodes, the highest episode count since series 24, on the 23rd of August 2014. Now I have fond memories of series 28 of Casualty. At the time it was fresh, it was dynamic, there was a lot of stunt work, a lot of great characters introduced and there was just loads of stuff. Um, to enjoy about this series. It was a very varied series which is always a good thing and of course it started on my birthday so I'm always going to have fond memories of rounding off my birthday with this new series of casualties starting. Now there is going to be spoilers of series 28 in this review so if you haven't seen it yet I would say go and watch it right now because it's an amazing series of casualty. So, Series 28 is the first proper transition series since Series 22. And what I mean by that is that the show feels very different by the end of this series compared to the start of it. And that's mainly down to the casting changes. I would say over half of the casualty cast depart during this series and a whole host of new characters are introduced, which to be honest, was needed. Um, I'm not saying Casualty was getting stale by this point, but it's clear that a revamp in the cast was requ required. So we get introduced to loads of complex and interesting, as well as likeable characters, which is always a great thing to see. Now, I would say the main themes of Series 28 are relationships, as well as our old friend, Hospital Bureaucracy. There's a load of interesting relationships which develop during Series 28. Some result in marriage, while others end in failure. But nevertheless, there's a lot of interesting relationships and nine times out of 10, the pairing of certain characters, they work really well. And as I said, Hospital Bureaucracy, there is a lot of time in this series dedicated to showing how bureaucracy works in the NHS with complaints being put in against stuff, as well as more general ideas about how the ED should be managed and who is best place to be clinical lead. So of course, there's a lot of bureaucracy stuff with Casualty kind of showing how bureaucracy often weakens the actual functioning of the NHS. And on a special note, the stunt work for Series 28 is amazing, even better than usual. Um, put it this way, in two episodes, which air one after the other, you have a helicopter crash and a train derailment. Now in a normal series of Casualty, you know, that you'd only find one of those episodes in it. But no, this series, both of those stunts happen in the same series. So for some reason, Series 28 pays a lot of attention to stunt work, and that's a great thing, because when Casualty do their stunts properly, they do it well. But of course, the main thing about this series which keeps it going is of course, just like any other series, the characters. So in terms of the characters, as I've said throughout this video, you have loads of dynamic and interesting characters introduced during series 28. You have Lily Chow, Rita Freeman, Ian Dean, Max Walker, Ethan Hardy, Cal Knight, and of course, Lofty. And I cannot think of a single character introduced during this series who I dislike. They're all great characters, there is a lot of depth to these characters, they're involved in very strong storylines, and of course the acting is 10 out of 10. None of these actors put in a phone, phoned in performance, they're all perfectly cast for their roles. Obviously I like them for different reasons, Lily Chow, a young and ambitious junior doctor, is kind of like a female equivalent of Dylan. She's very rude, she's very career oriented. she doesn't get on well with hardly any of the staff in the ED, but viewers can't help but love her. And then you have more calm in presence like fan favorite Ethan Hardy, who's really more of a calm doctor. He's likable, he's a bit quirky, he's a bit out there. Obviously he has stuff with his brother Cal, who is, let's face it, a heartthrob throughout the ED. And their rivalry is really great. It really makes both characters' personalities stick in your mind because they're so different, even though they're brothers. And I would say the main, um, character-driven storyline which I love in this series 
is the journey that clinical lead Zoe Hannah goes on. Now in series 27, Zoe was a dominant force because obviously she was quite an inexperienced clinical lead. By the end of that series, it appeared that she was finally in control of the uh, department and up to the job. Well, in series 28, they kind of challenge her with the arrival of Holby City character Connie Beach and portrayed brilliantly by Amanda Meeling. And there is a rivalry which develops between Zoe and Connie, which is great to see. I love the power games that those two play. And eventually, Zoe does the grown-up thing. She steps down voluntarily because she realises that while she doesn't like Connie, Connie is the best person to run the ED. And I think that's great because Zoe, if she had an ego, could have stayed, even though it weren't in the department's best interest. But she fell on her sword. So even though Connie is now queen of the ED, Zoe can say that, you know, she left with her head held high. Departures from series 28 are also very varied, which is always a good thing. You have happy ever afters like registrars Tom and Sam getting married. I weren't always invested in that relationship. And in series 28, it kind of feels a bit rushed because Sam nearly falls under the charms of old flamey and dean though eventually she settles on tom and they get married on christmas and live happily ever after which is always a nice thing i like that casualty used to buck the trend around christmas they would always have a more heartwarming and uplifting story which is different from a lot of the soaps and dramas around christmas other departures from the series are not so happily ever after um, if I had to pick one of my favourites, it would be Fletch. Now, I know Fletch didn't go far. He went into Holby City a couple of weeks later. But his departure from Casualty was action-packed. He has just um, got on good terms with his wife, Nasli, again. Obviously, Nasli fell pregnant during this series. Um, and, you know, he now has a fourth child. And everything seems to be going his way. But then he finds out that his old flame, Tess, is in a train derailment. And so he puts all of that on the line to go and save her. And of course, typical casualty, everything comes out. His wife leaves him. Fletch is humiliated in the ED. And Tess eventually turns him down as well. So he decides there's nothing left for him anymore. And as Tess makes it clear that she can't work at the ED if Fletch is still there because she finds it too difficult, Fletch decides, oh, fine then. I love you too much to see you in pain. I'll resign instead. And I really enjoy Fletcher's departure. Not only is it action-packed, it's very emotional as well. And I love Fletcher's final scenes in Casualty where he goes to the pub and all the staff raise a glass for him and just say to Fletch as he walks away from the ED. That was just the perfect exit. It's one of those exits which Casualty, you know, when they go for it, they really do give you an exit to remember. Obviously, the existing characters get a lot of stuff to do in Series 28 as well. You have Ash phoning the police on his own daughter. Now, his daughter, Ella, has been shown to be very manipulative and always seems to have her dad wrapped around her little finger. But once, she inadvertently causes the death of one of her friends from by stealing ketamine from her dad. Ash decides that enough is enough and he phones the police and gets her arrested to teach her a lesson. And that was a shocking moment. I never thought Ash would have the backbone to stand up to his daughter in the way that he did. But he did a great job and Patrick Robinson as an actor was fantastic throughout that storyline. Big Mac, he gets a new job. He's no longer a porter. He gets sick of being the punching bag of the ED. So he decides to become an emergency care assistant and work for the ambulance service. And I have to admit, out of all the jobs Big Mac has had in Casualty, when he was with the ambulance service, that was when he was a great character. He has a great rapport with Jeff, um, those who work really well together. And it's nice to see Big Mac actually given something to do. Before, Big Mac was used for a lot of comedic storylines. Um, so it's nice to actually see him doing something in the ED, which is always great to see. So this series, it's a good series for Big Mac, I have to admit. And speaking of the paramedics, they have a lot to do as well. Dixie goes on a bit of a journey in series 28, and Jane Hazelgrove as an actor does an amazing job uh, with the storyline she is given. We see Dixie's love interest die from a brain injury, which is of course very emotional. And then she gets suspended because she goes against protocol and tries to um, 
make sure that an ill patient can see his mother before she passes away. And that was a very interesting storyline because it brings Dixie and Jeff's friendship to the brink because obviously Jeff doesn't agree with Dixie's decision. So that was a very interesting route that they decided to go down because Jeff and Dixie have been shown to have quite a solid relationship. So it's always great when the writers decide to see how far they can challenge them. So yeah, a lot of the existing characters in Chaos City have a lot to do in series 28. And finally, obviously, as I said, uh, one of this series themes is its emphasis on relationships and we have a lot of decent relationships. It's great to see nurse Jamie who came out as gay um, leaving the ED to be with a, a man that he loves. I thought that was a great end to that character's story arc. He's finally accepted for who he is and finds true love in the end. We have Zoe and Max. Uh, of course clinical lead Zoe and Porter Max may not seem like the perfect fit but they have great chemistry together and um, th they make you laugh. They really do make you laugh. You can tell that Zoe loves Max and Max clearly loves Zoe. So it's devastating in the last episode of this series. Zoe appears to leave the ED altogether and leave Max behind. You can really feel for Max by the end of this series because you can tell that he is heartbroken. And obviously what I consider an under underrated relationship is paramedic Jeff and Tamsin. Now, Tamsin Bale had appeared in Kalshti before she returns for another stint. Um, and I really like Jeff and Tamsin's will they, won't they relationship. The two clearly have good chemistry. They work well together. And you're just constantly sitting there saying, come on, guys. Um, <laughs> get together because you obviously like one another. So yeah, there's a lot of nice relationships in this series, which are a joy to watch on screen. So in conclusion, series 28 is a great transition series of casualty, which completely changes the makeup of the ED. A lot of new characters are introduced who are very well integrated and I cannot fault the acting or storylines they are involved in at all. The existing characters get a lot of interesting storylines and there are some good departures this series as well which range from happily ever afters to more action packed and emotional departures. And obviously the stunt work for this series should be applauded. It creates an action packed and exciting show and for me series 28 will always be one of my personal favourites because I think it just has something for everyone. So thanks for watching guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. And I will see you in another one. See ya!